name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. A to Temple Terrace. He says the Father loves the Son, and He will show Him greater works than these, so that Temple Terrace may be amazed, because He is an amazing God. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Friends, would you raise your right hand to God, your right hand. And would you say this after me? You, O oh God, are an amazing God. I love you beyond word. You are absolutely real. Everything else, will fade away. Everything else will fade away. But you will live forever. I give my life to you. So that I might live forever. Make me real, O oh Lord. Amaze me, O oh Lord. You are the best. You are the best. And I love you. I love you. And let's give to God, the Holy Trinity, a round of amazing applause. You really do love him, don't you? Amen. So do I. Amen. I think maybe we're a good match tonight. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, Lord, don't leave your shepherds without sheep. And don't leave your sheep without their shepherd. Amen? Amen. So I'm glad to be here with a bunch of beautiful sheep who love God. <laughs> it's a good match. And listen, we want to thank, first of all, our pastor, Father Michael. He's a good and wonderful and a humble priest who invited me. Would you give Father Michael your appreciation? <laughs> the, the priests don't always get enough you know, affirmation or appreciation, so make sure you tell Father Mike how much you love him when you see him. Amen. Amen. We also have a wonderful deacon here, Deacon Frank, and he's, Deacon Frank is actually a doctor, and he told me that today is Doctor's Day. <laughs> so we got to give him a double round of applause to Deacon <laughs> Frank.
Beloved, tonight I have a special announcement for you. On this altar tonight, the God-man will appear. God will make an appearance in Corpus Christi Church in just a few minutes. Amen? Amen. And he is the one that our hearts long for. You see, to be a real Catholic is to long for God. And that's why the Lord, he compliments King David, who is perhaps the greatest saint of the Old Testament. Perhaps he's the apple of God's eye. And the Lord complimented David, and he complimented him then in this way. He said of King David, he is a man of many desires. You know, at first glance, that's kind of an unusual compliment coming from God. He, David, God loves him beyond all words. He is the apple of God's eye. Why? Because he's a man of many desires. That almost sounds contradictory, doesn't it? The first part of the explanation is this. In Hebrew, the ancient Aramaic, when the Lord says, or anyone says in the Old Testament, many in that way, it doesn't mean many as multiplied this way, horizontally, like many different desires. Many is referring to the depth of the desire. And those many levels is what it really means. It's hard to translate some ancient language into modern English. It doesn't fit perfectly. So when God says he's a man of many desires, he means he's a man of deep desire. That's what it actually means. And the Lord says to challenge you today, beloved, that you want to be men and women of deep desire, that we never go to Mass, you and I, routinely. The Mass is the greatest gift God has ever given to the world. Amen? Amen. And as you probably know, and has been prophesied by a multitude of canonized saints, one day soon, probably in most of our lifetime, we will see the day when the whole world will be Roman Catholic and worshiping God in the Mass, in the Eucharist. The whole world. Amen? Amen? That day is coming. And that's because there's only one name that's been given to mankind by which man can be saved. And there's only one name given to Temple Terrace by which Temple Terrace can be saved. Amen? Amen. And that name is Jesus Christ. And I know it's not politically correct today to say things like that, which is ridiculous. In other words, we're not allowed to speak the truth anymore, you see? Hi, sis. Good to see you. So it's like even in the church, we're like afraid to speak what is true. And beloved, Jesus is the one Savior of the world. And he shed all of his blood that every human being could be saved. Amen? So I'm going to share with you, first of all, a true story about this having to do with our Muslim brothers and sisters. Because no one less than Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, Venerable Bishop Sheen, said that one day, he said, the entire Muslim world will become Roman Catholic through the prayers of Our Lady of Fatima. Did you know that? Now, of course, you know, that's really true, not only for Muslims, but for Hindus and for Buddhists, and for everyone who works at CNN as well. <laughs> it's actually true for everybody, that all will become Catholic and truly in love with God. And one thing beautiful about the Muslim people that I've noticed is that frequently they have a, a strong desire in their hearts. Very misguided, I would say, but a strong desire. If you would match their strong desire with our Eucharist, you would have a uranium explosion, a uranium bomb. Amen? <laughs> their desire and our Eucharist, our Eucharist and their desire. Amen? Amen? They need our Eucharist and we need their desires. Amen? Amen? It's very true. And at the airport, I travel a lot and I notice in most of the big airports, they have like a little prayer room or a chapel. They're, they're not always too pretty or too nice, to be honest with you. I don't know who takes care of them. But I'm going to tell you something I've noticed as a Catholic priest who travels everywhere. I always see Muslims coming in to pray in the prayer rooms. I never see any Catholics. I always see Muslims come in. And they put their little blanket on the ground. 
and they put their head to the ground. And I'm the only one who's, who's Catholic with a Bible in my hand. They're always there. And I say, wow, we need their commitment and their desire, and they need our Bible and our Jesus. Amen? Amen. So we don't make fun of Muslims. They got something right, didn't they? And by the way, their women dress modestly. Amen? Yes. So they got a lot right. We need their commitment to prayer and their hunger for God. And they need our Bible, our sacraments, our Jesus. Amen? Amen. And all the saints have talked about this, St. Louis to Montford in a particular way, that all the Muslims will become Catholic. And so, beloved, you and I better be on our A game beginning tonight. So when they come, we're ready to help them. Amen? Amen. But this did happen to me many years ago, two weeks after 911. You know, the terrible tragedy of the, the Twin Towers collapsing with the airplanes driven into them, flown into them. Of course, it was a, a pivotal moment in the life of our nation. It was tragic in many different ways. And for us priests who were preaching around the country that day and for the next two or three or four weeks, all the churches were full like this. Every Catholic church was full. After about a month or two, it started to wane down. After about six months, you'd be lucky if you find 20 people at daily mass. What happened? You see, what does it take to make us on fire for God? Amen? Amen. What does it take? Another 911? I hope not. But that may be what it takes, and that may be what's coming. And so, beloved, the Muslim people, they're not all bad, but they need Jesus. Amen? Amen. After 911, we were preaching, the churches were full, but I noticed that everybody was afraid. It was very obvious to us priests that God's people were afraid. And so I took it to prayer because it bothered me. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why are your people afraid? Aren't you the living God? Aren't you the true God? Are you not the savior of the world? Should they not be afraid of us? Why are we afraid of them? We are the sons and daughters of the true God. Amen? Yeah. And I don't mean to say we want to go after them. I don't mean that at all. But why are we afraid when our father, he made the universe and owns the cattle on a thousand hills? Amen? So I asked the Lord, Lord, I know the prophecies of St. Louis de Montfort, of Venerable Mary of Agrada, of all the saints, Venerable Bishop Fulton J. Sheen. I know the prophecies that it's just fulfilling the book of Revelation. It's fulfilling the Bible, right? One day, the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Amen. Would you say this after me right now? Say, one day, one day. every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess, tongue shall confess that, Jesus that Jesus Christ is Lord. There's a great era of peace coming to the whole world. When the whole world will not just be Catholic, but will be in love with God. Amen? Amen. And miracles will happen everywhere during this age of peace. I asked the Lord to give me a sign, though. Lord, should I preach about these prophecies from your saints? Give me a sign. I'd... I don't know if I should. It's private revelation, but it's all approved. Do you want me to speak about this to your people? And I said that prayer one day, two weeks after 911, here in Tampa. I was born and raised in Tampa. And I came back to visit my sweet old mama for 24 hours in Tampa. Then I had to be driven from Tampa to Tallahassee on Friday evening to celebrate a wedding mass on Saturday in Tallahassee. So on Friday, I was visiting my mother. I went to the back room and I said a prayer to God to give me a sign whether to preach to you about what's really going to happen. Not to live in fear of anyone, but to live in expectation of victory. Amen? Amen. And so I made the prayer Friday morning around midday. My friend came to pick me up. You might know him. His name was Hubert Hay. He was a faithful old Catholic in this city. And Hubert picked me up 
and he drove me all the way to Tallahassee, an eight-hour drive. We got there Friday night, Saturday morning. We had a wedding mass in the Cole Cathedral of St. Thomas More, there at FSU. Did the wedding mass, and I preach, and another priest celebrated, another Father Michael. He was the main celebrant, and I did the preaching. And afterwards, they took us to a country club. So now it's about 24 hours after I made my prayer to Jesus here in Tampa. It's 24 hours later, Saturday midday in Tallahassee. Saturday midday. And they take me to a country club, and I take whatever they gave me. I think it was a cup of coffee. And I went outside and looked at the gardens, and I got away from all the noise of the party and got real quiet. Because when you preach a lot and you counsel, you have to get away to recharge your battery. You know what I mean? So I left everybody behind, and I went out, and I prayed quietly. And I drank my coffee and just thanked God for the beauty that I was seeing, when suddenly, in the middle of a sip, somebody taps me on my back shoulder. And I thought, oh, shoot, I thought I was all by myself. <laughs> and I had to turn around, and there was a young man from the wedding party. He wasn't the bridegroom, but he was one of the groomsmen. He's wearing a beautiful tuxedo. There were like 10 groomsmen, all FSU students, wearing a beautiful tuxedo. There were 10 beautiful bridesmaids. This was one of the young men, one of the groomsmen. He tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around. I looked at him. His skin was not white and it was not black. He had olive skin. He was Middle Eastern, if you get my drift. He was Middle Eastern. And he looked at me, he put his hands like this, and the young man bowed to me like that. Who does that in the world? Muslims do. That's the bow of a Muslim. I've been with him many times. They will bow like this when you come in out of respect. He bowed to me. And he said to me, Father, he said, I love that mass. <laughs> and then he said to me, Father, I said, yes. I'm Muslim. <laughs> now, I had just asked Jesus, your Savior and mine, the only God of the universe, the only one. I asked him to give me a sign if the Muslims will be converted to the Catholic faith. I asked him. Amen. Amen. 24 hours later, in another city, 400 miles away in Tallahassee, this happens to me. He bows and says, Father, I love the Mass. I'm Muslim. And then he said to me, but three months ago, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Three months ago, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I asked the Lord the day before, but that wasn't enough because I didn't say just Christian. I said Catholic. And so he looked at me. He said, Father, three months ago, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He said, just recently, I was received into the Holy Catholic Church. That's what he said to me. I haven't said a word yet. I was like, well, I, mean, yeah, well. I never seen him before. He never saw me before. Why did he come up and say that to me? Because our God is a living God. Amen. 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 He hears every cry of your lips, every one. Not a cry goes unheard. He says, I tell all of you here, especially the young ones, he's heard your cry. He's heard your cry. And he will answer it at the perfect time. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you, God is beautiful. He's loving and kind. He's all powerful. And his power is at the service of his love. Amen? Amen? And he will answer all of your prayers down to the last detail. Amen? Tonight, beloved, we pray yes for our beloved Muslim brothers and sisters to become Catholic for their own sake and for God's glory. Amen? Amen. But more than that, we pray tonight that you become saints. Amen? amen. You were slow on that amen. <laughs> and I'll tell you one reason why. Because only saints are happy. Amen? Everyone else is miserable. 
just go to the local restaurant or to the mall and sit there for an hour. Amen. If you see one truly smiling face, I'll give you a hundred dollars. <laughs> They're all miserable. Amen? Amen. Only saints are happy. Amen? Amen. And he gives to you and I in the Eucharist, the bread of joy. The Eucharist, beloved, is truly, it is God incarnate, and he is the source of joy. He said, I've come that you might have joy and have it to the full. Amen? Amen. And so, beloved, to be a sad Catholic is like a square wheel. It doesn't work. It doesn't make sense. You and I should be glowing with the presence and the joy of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And you want to know that very shortly on the altar... Jesus, the one begotten Son of God, true God and true man, will be present in his flesh. Amen? Amen? And that's why when the world is converted, everyone will come to church, including the Buddhists and the Hindus and the Muslims and CNN. And they will be here with us. And MSNBC too, by the way. And they'll be worshiping the one true God in the Eucharist. And there will be Eucharistic miracles multiplying all over the world. Amen? Amen. Now, I want to tell you one that happened at my chapel. Just last year, I have a, a beautiful, like a healing chapel in Georgia, blessed by the Archbishop. And it's in the middle of a Catholic homeschooling community out in the woods, outside of Atlanta. And I was asked to give a retreat to teenagers about a year ago. And it was the youth group that was run by Mother Teresa, by her sisters there in Atlanta. So I'm pretty close friends with them. I sort of give them spiritual direction. So they called in a favor on me. and said, Father, can we bring the kids there for our retreat? I said, well, sure. So we found it an agreeable date. We did all the beautiful young women on Saturday and all the teenage boys on Sunday. The retreats went really well. Saturday with the girls, it just went perfectly, so to speak. I wasn't by myself. I had another speaker, a lay woman who had the gift of healing. And I had a beautiful music group with me. So it was like a, a team effort, you see. And remember this from now on. Remember this as a Catholic. We'll never have it all together, but together we'll have it all. Yes. Amen? Amen? We'll never have it all together. Forget it, but together we'll have it all. Amen? Amen? So always invite others to help you in your ministry. Amen? Amen. Don't be the Lone Ranger. Amen? <laughs> you need a Tonto somewhere. Always work with others. Amen? Amen? So on Sunday, beloved, we started the retreat for the, the boys in the morning. It was going extremely well. And then around midday, I had to leave. <clears throat> And this is the life of a priest. I, Father Michael can tell you even more than I can. That here in one day, I had to do this a retreat for youth in the morning, go do a funeral for an old, beautiful old lady in the afternoon, and come back and finish the retreat for the teenagers. Your head can start spinning if you're not careful, you know what I mean? And make sure you get the right homily in the right place, you know what I mean? <laughs> could really cause trouble. So I, we did the retreat in the morning. It was going beautifully. And then I, I got in the car and drove to do the funeral mass in another city, about a half hour away. And I was driving. I was saying, Lord, I was thanking him. Thank you for the good retreat. Uh, but we, we need something more. I'm a little bit rash, a little bit brash with the Lord. But he's my best friend. Is he your best friend? <laughs> when you have a best friend, you're real with him. Amen. If you can't be real with him, he's not your best friend. I'm sorry. You're putting on a show and so is he. And if God, beloved, if he's your best friend, you can be real. And if you're not real with God, he's not your best friend. Amen? Amen. So beginning tonight, no more fancy dancy prayers to God, real prayers to God. Amen? Amen. Be honest and simple and speak from your heart. And God responds to that because the language of heaven is real. He only speaks one language. It's called reality. Amen? Amen? So I told the Lord, it's a beautiful retreat, Lord, but it's not enough. 
We need something more. And I know, Lord, you're doing good, God. You got an A+. Plus. I had to butter him up a little bit, you know what I mean? But I said, we need something more, please. And I went to the funeral and did the funeral mass. And I jumped in my car afterwards to head right back to my chapel to finish the last part of the retreat, like from, like from 2 to 4.30. And the sisters warned me, they said, Father, the boys, when it hits 4.30, they want to go home. Don't go to 4.31, you see? Finish it at 4.30. I said, okay, sister, I'll do the best that I can. Famous last words, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I went back. As I'm driving back, I said to the Lord again, I was complaining. You see, lovers sometimes complain to one another, don't they? And I had a lover's complaint. And I said, Lord, it's beautiful, it's good, the music is fine, everything is good, but it's not enough, Lord. They're good boys, and they're being attentive, they're not being disobedient, they're listening. They're good boys, but Lord, it's not enough. The world is filled with satanic darkness. I'm glad we'll give them a nice retreat, but they need something more than nice. They need God. They need you. Not nice words about you. They need you. Amen. That's why they're dying. We're giving our kids nice little words. They don't need nice little words. They need God. Amen? Amen. They need God himself in their hearts working miracles. Amen? Amen? And I'm sorry I got upset. And I started crying in my car. Anybody who passed it thought I was a crazy priest. I'm crying. <laughs> I'm weeping. you got to do something. It's not enough. It's an A-plus retreat, but we need an A-plus, plus, plus, plus retreat. Amen? You've got to do something, God. You're the boss. You're the miracle worker. They need you, not me. They need you, 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 not me, you, in their heart. Oh, baby. I'm surprised he didn't hit me, you know what I mean? So I got back and I started my next talk. The music group was very good, and I gave my next talk. I'm up there with the Ambo. We're talking about, really about the, the Eucharist and about Jesus. And halfway through my talk, God comes over me. And he'll come over you too if you love him. And he said to me, stop right there. Yes, sir. He said, stop. He said to me, go and put my son on the altar. And I stop my talk. When, when God speaks, I listen. Amen? Amen. I stopped. Right midway through, went right to the tabernacle, took the Lord out. I had the monstrance there already. I put the monstrance on the altar, and I put the Lord into the monstrance, and the youth band picked up on it immediately. They were very um, precocious, and they began playing, like, O Salutari Sostia. They began playing the Latin song to worship God. They picked up on it right away, and the boys, they all knelt down with me. All the boys in the band began to play, and I'm worshiping God. I just did what he said, so he's on the altar now. That's okay, because they only need Jesus. They don't need me. They need Jesus. Amen? Amen. He's there in front of me, and I'm worshiping him. And we finish the opening song, and I look up at Jesus in the Eucharist, and suddenly I see his face on the hose looking back at me. I see his face, a Jewish face, on the host, looking at me, eyes twinkling, sparkling the eye. And I look at him, and I say to him, I'm getting emotional now because I'm in love. I'm in love with Jesus. Are you in love? I'm in love with Jesus. I'm in love with him. I'm in love with him. Is that all right? Are you in love with him? I saw our best friend. I saw him. In the, he almost went like this. He almost winked at me. His eyes were twinkling. And I said to him, I said, Jesus, should I tell the boys? Because, you know, it's happened to me before. But I don't always say it out loud. You know what I mean? So I said, Lord, should I tell them? He said, yes. So I said, boys, your Lord and Savior, Jesus, is on the host smiling at you and me right now. I said that right from the front. 
And when I said that, last year in my chapel outside of Atlanta, Georgia, the boys in the front row jumped and screamed. Ah! Because they were close enough to see what I was seeing. They screamed. And when they screamed, they rushed the church, stood up. And I said, can you see him? They said, yes. They began crying. I said, guys in the back, if you want to see, come on up here with us. We had a herd of buffalo stampede through my chapel. <laughs> and all around me, the boys came. And I'm kneeling here. And they're all seeing Jesus. And they all have tears in their eyes. And we all worship Jesus for the next five hours. Way past 4.30, they said to me, Father, can we stay longer? I said, that's really a miracle. Amen. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. God is amazing. Amen. God is amazing. Amen. This is our God. His other name is Corpus Christi. And that's why I'm sharing this with you tonight. Because this is the church of Corpus Christi. Amen? Amen? Beloved, what an amazing God we have. Amen? Amen? And so I can only share this with you. What do I know? Not much, but I share this with you. I ripped open my heart to God in my car. I nearly had an accident. And I was crying. I find the Bible says, rip open your heart, not your garment. Rip open your heart. And that's what's missing in our church. We pray from our lips and not from our hearts. We have to love God from our hearts. Amen. Rip open your heart to God. Amen. I'm sorry. That's the Catholic Bible. Amen. And I share that with you. No, I'm not being mean. I love you. You're, I'm not yelling at you. I'm yelling with you. Amen. I'm not mad at you. I want to show you the way to miracles. I want to show you the way to God. God does not deal with hypocrisy. He doesn't want a song and dance from you. He doesn't want that. He wants you to be real from your heart. And if you're dying when you get up in the morning, don't say, oh God, everything is so beautiful. Stop it. You say, God, I'm dying. How about it? I'm dying. Be real with God. Amen? That's when he responds. That's why the Bible says, draw near to me, O man, and I will draw near to you. Amen? That's what that means. You draw near to God by honesty. He speaks the language of honesty. Amen? And so, beloved, I'm going to end right about there. Is that all right? I have about 25 more pages in my homily. And 15 more miracles. How much time do you have? I can keep going. But I might get in trouble from Father Michael. So I better stop right now. But beloved, are you in love with God? Yes. I'm in love too. Are, are we in love with God? Yes. This is the core of the Roman Catholic faith. It's not keeping rules and regulations. They're fine where they belong. It is loving God with all your soul. I mean all of it. Willing to die. Lord, if I'm going to die for you tonight, I will die for you. Amen? Amen? Open your heart, not your garment today. And God will come down and heal you. And you will see wonders you've never seen before. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It's Lent, you're not supposed to say hallelujah. <laughs> I was just testing you. You're excused, though. You're excused. Amen? Amen. And so, beloved, I'm going to finish with that. I always like to go to Mary because she's the mother of the Eucharist. She's the mother of Corpus Christi and she is the mother of our joy. If you entrust this to mama tonight, you say, mama, help me to rip open my heart. We we'll say it after me, say, mama, mama. help me to be real with God. Help me to pray like a saint. Rip open my heart that God may draw near. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.